What's up, party people? It's your boy Optimus Code. Welcome to the channel. So today we're going to do a really quick video and we're going to go over CMOS, BIOS, PlayStation, and what it means for gamers with DRM. If you stick around to the end of the video, you'll have a much better understanding of what this whole CMOS issue is and if you should be concerned with it or not. Okay, so at first I wasn't going to cover this because I think the information is out there and it's readily available and easy for anyone to get. But a couple of people convinced me in the DMs that this is something that would be appropriate for the channel. Because even though it's not video game specific technology, it is something that affects gamers from a technological standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and explain it. So first, people are concerned about a CMOS battery, C-M-O-S, and they don't understand what it is or what it does, and there seems to be some um, fear that the CMOS battery is going to disable our consoles. So first, a CMOS battery, and that's C-M-O-S, and it basically that is an abbreviation for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. And long story short, it's just a battery. And the reason that this is important is because every computer, a desktop, laptop, um, console, smartwatch, all of them, they all have a motherboard. And every motherboard has a CMOS battery. And the point of the CMOS battery is to provide power to a special section of your computer called the BIOS. It's B-I-O-S. And if you've ever built a computer before, you understand what the BIOS is. So every computer has BIOS pre-programmed into its hardware, every single one. And the BIOS is different than an operating system. So for example, Windows 10 or Mac OS or Linux, um, operating systems can be installed and uninstalled and they can be updated long after you bought your computer or laptop, whatever kind of computer you have. The operating system that you choose to install on that is optional. Of course, now with these game consoles, it's a lot more difficult to switch the operating system. But if you know what you're doing, you can because it's just a computer. It is a specially configured computer set up to do one specific thing. But at the end of the day, it's just a computer. And you can, if you were willing to go through the work, certainly change the operating system on any console that you have. Don't know why you would, but you could. The point is, is that it's just another computer. Every computer has a BIOS though. And the BIOS is different than the operating system. The BIOS is integrated into the computer while it's being manufactured. So while the operating system comes later, the BIOS is part of the actual hardware itself. It's part of the motherboard. Oh, and by the way, BIOS stands for basic input output system. And so basically what it does is it manages the essential functions of your computer, whatever type of computer that is. And mainly it has settings. So part of those settings are like the system date and time as part of the BIOS, along with other data, but that's not really relevant for this conversation. But it's just settings, right? That, that's what it is. And these settings allow the computer to be configured in a particular way. And then before your operating system even loads, all this stuff, these BIOS checks happen. And all of this stuff is like ready to go for when you load your operating system. If you listen to the video where we talked about clock cycles, then you understand that every computer works with clocks and cycles and the motherboard uses a real time clock and the clock is always active. And when I say always active, that means that the clock is active if the computer is active or not. So even if you turn off your computer, even unplug it from the wall or even remove the battery from a laptop, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you power it down completely, uh, the real-time clock that's running in the computer gets its power from this CMOS battery. That's all it is, is a battery. And this little tiny battery is always active. Again, even if the computer is switched off, the battery is working. Now, it's basically a backup battery and it really only comes into play when the system is switched off. And the point of it is to hold the settings. And so this is why, like if you unplug your PlayStation or you unplug your Xbox and you leave it unplugged for two or three days, and if you plug it back in, the date will still be correct. The time will still be correct. All of that good stuff because it's stored in the BIOS, which is powered by the CMOS. And to be clear, the BIOS is not the CMOS. 
the bios get its energy and its power from the CMOS so that whenever the computer is not getting normal power, then it uses this backup power from the CMOS. And this is on every computer. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a laptop, desktop, smartphone, whatever it is, this always happens. Every motherboard has a CMOS battery in it. So what's the problem? When it comes to gaming consoles, specifically the PlayStation console, what is the problem with the CMOS? Well, that has to do with DRM, which is digital rights management. And the whole point is they're trying to stop people from stealing from them. They're trying to prevent piracy. And so one of the settings in the BIOS for PS3 is the date and time, same with other motherboards, the system date and time. Well, and I'm not gonna get into the specifics of how Sony does this, because number one, I don't understand it all. And number two, it's not really relevant for you to understand what's going on. The gist of it is that the date and time is stored in the BIOS. And when you load up a game on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5, they will do a check with PSN, the PlayStation Network. They will save some data, and that data is saved in the BIOS. The reason this is relevant is because in the event that they can't connect to PSN, so say you're playing somewhere without internet connection, you can still load your games, you can still play games from the PlayStation Network, even though you're not connected, assuming you have them downloaded already. And this happens because they just check the settings in the BIOS and they can confirm they can check the data that's in the BIOS, which is powered by the CMOS, and they can confirm that the game you are playing, you have the rights to play it and all of that good stuff because they've stored certain data in the settings and the game was allowed to run and no problem. Well, what happens if this battery dies and you lose the settings that's in your BIOS? Well, in that case, what they will do is they will connect to PSN. So let's go through each scenario. So if you are connected to the PlayStation Network and your CMOS battery dies and you lose the settings that's in the BIOS, when you start a game, the system will connect to PSN, confirm that you have the rights to play this game and everything proceeds like normal. There's no problem. You still get to play your games just fine. What about the scenario then where PSN is down, but you have your CMOS. So in that scenario, same thing. They try to check PSN, PSN is down. Okay, well I can't check PSN, so I will fall back on the data that's stored in the BIOS. You can still play your games. No harm, no foul, everything works great. The other scenario, what if PSN is not available and the CMOS battery dies? That's when we have a problem. Because now the system cannot confirm that you have rights to play this game through PSN and it can't use the backup settings in the BIOS. And so at this point then, based on some stuff in the PlayStation operating system, they won't allow this game to load. And that's if you have the disc version or digital version, it doesn't matter. They're going to confirm that you can play the game that you're trying to play if it's physical or digital. So going all physical does not alleviate this problem or this potential hypothetical problem. So the first thing that we need to be aware of is CMOS batteries last a really, really long time. And when I say a really long time, I mean like a really long time, like 10, 20, 30 years. Again, every computer you've ever had has had a CMOS battery in it. And I haven't seen a bunch of y'all out here complaining that your CMOS battery has died and your device is no longer functioning. That's because they last a really long time. So a lot of this is what I call hypothetical worry. It's not really a real danger. It's just something people like to talk about. It is like the flavor of the month for whatever reason. So the CMOS batteries last a really long time and the likelihood that one will die is really small. Now, actually that's not true. The likelihood that it will die is really high because all batteries die over time. It's just that it will be so far from now that it's not really worth concerning yourself with. Second, they can be replaced. So if your CMOS battery dies, all you have to do is put in another one. It's real easy. And here's the thing though, you will lose those settings that's in the BIOS more than likely, um, depending on if you catch it, if it's plugged in, has it lost power, you know, like all that good stuff. So depending on if you were able to change the battery without losing settings, 
which I'm not even sure if you can. I'll have to talk to Leviathan about that and see what he says. But at the end of the day, you can change your CMOS battery. Some settings may be lost and you just have to resync those and then everything is fine and you back off to the races for another 20, 30 years. It's not really a big deal. The issue is, is people are concerned that if PlayStation Network goes down or goes away. So if somehow PlayStation is out of business and all the games that you bought and all of this good stuff and servers are down forever and now you're just trapped and your CMOS battery dies and now games that you bought you won't get to play and they're rightfully yours but you don't get to play them anymore. You know, all of this good stuff. That is the fear that people have. Um, I'm not really gonna buy into that because I don't like the whole fear mongering. It is not unreasonable that Sony, if they understand that they're about to go out of business, Sony can very easily create an update patch that they send out to all, all consoles that removes this need for the DRM check if they were gonna go out of business and worried about um, losing people, losing their games and all of this good stuff. So this is not really a real concern Number one, because I don't foresee the PlayStation Network going down anytime soon and CMOS batteries last a long time. And in order for this to be a problem, both of those things would have to happen at once. Your CMOS battery would have to die and the PlayStation Network would have to be down both at the same time. If either one of those is still active, then you don't have any problem. And yeah, I'm... I'm not a prognosticator, but I'm pretty sure that the PlayStation Network is going to be around at least for the rest of my lifetime and probably yours too. So let's not get overly concerned with this stuff. The CMOS battery is easy to change. You just have to resync some settings back in your BIOS and you're off to the races again for another 20 to 30 years. All right, time for the quiz. Okay, that's it. Time's up, quiz over, pencils down. How did y'all do? So hopefully this was able to clear up some confusion for y'all. Hopefully the quiz was easy to pass and y'all understand what's going on now and you have a better sense of what to expect with these consoles going forward. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit up a like. If you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe. Y'all know the deal, we got more stuff coming for you. If you know someone that would benefit from this type of content, go ahead and tell them about the channel. Let them come through, check us out. Let them see for themselves if this is something that they want to be bothered with. Thank you so much for the support so far. I'm really feeling the love. I really appreciate it. And we're going to keep it coming. We got more material for y'all. I'm serious. We got some really good stuff coming, some higher technical stuff. We working on the basics right now. We're building the foundation on which to build the higher topics, but they are coming. And everybody will be blessed for sticking with the channel. Appreciate the support and we'll see y'all next time. Peace.